Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to all of you. God doesn't tell us the future. Perhaps one reason is we couldn't endure the present. If you knew what was coming, it would make today impossible. Jesus said in Lent, he's been saying, I am going to suffer. I am going to die. All to unburden what burdens you now. Be it guilt or the consequences of living in a guilty, sin-filled world to give you not condemnation, but condemned for you to give you comfort. So God, wake us up where we need it and rest us in his words today. We'll begin with a hymn about God and his temple because we see Jesus today in the temple, hymn 224. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner.
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be that atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you. This is what he says. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great. And they are glorious, so his name is worthy of praise. pray. Almighty God, look with favor on your humble servants and stretch out the right hand of your power to defend us against all our enemies. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first reading for this third Sunday in Lent is the giving of the Ten Commandments. Do you remember from your Bible instruction days, confirmation, adult instruction, the three uses of the law? The three uses of the law, I'll give you the second and third. Curb, guide, and the first was mirror. So the law, before it does anything else, it shows me that I haven't kept that. Listen to the Lord's directions that come with life. And God spoke all these words. I'm the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So it makes sense. Because I'm your God, I did this for you. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to immeasurably more, a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your work. The seventh is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. 
For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that's in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy, a day to reflect on his work for you. Fourth, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land and the Lord, that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. Jesus says hatred is tantamount. You shall not commit adultery, anyone who looks at a woman lustfully. You shall not steal. Ah, tax time. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Your near, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. So what is a, an exposed, guilty, repentant, yet can't do what I should do? What am I supposed to do? This lesson answers that. What is a guilty sinner who has asked for forgiveness and mercy to do? Therefore, there is now no condemnation Though I said I deserved it, for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, help me keep it, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did. By sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering, to live the life I can't, and then condemned in the flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone do, does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, yet the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. The word of the Lord. Our verse of the day from John chapter 3. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Please stand. Our gospel lesson, which is also our sermon text today, is Jesus cleanses the temple. John chapter 2, verse 13. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove out from the temple courts both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, Who, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, the disciples recalled what had said, he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
it's the question that most people don't know they're asking. It's the question that most people don't know they are asking is where is the lamb? What bothers people the most? What you want to get or get rid of? What bothers people the most? What you want to get or get rid of? A woman drove into a church parking lot, left the car running, finds the entrance, church entrance, goes into the door, pastor hears, comes to the door to meet her, and she says, do you take donations from non-members? Again, drove up during the week, left the car running, went to the church entrance door. Do you take donations from non-members? Was this, she had pain in her eye. Was this Judas-like? Throwing money at something you had done? Whatever she was dealing with, she was dealing with something heavy, and she was dealing with it with $20. Do you know what the largest festival in the world is? It's a Hindu festival called the Kum Mila. And in 2019, it was held at a confluence of three rivers where it was thought that a drop of divine nectar had spilled as a result of a fight between demons and gods that knocked a pitcher of this divine nectar over. 200 million people came to that festival over a course of I don't know how many days. 200 million. Right. One day, 50 million. And that day was bathing day because it was thought that a dip in that river, the confluence of three where a divine nectar was spilled, would wash away your sins. What bothers people the most? What you want to get or get rid of? When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus, let's go to church. In the Old Testament lesson, you heard that. The presence of God on that mountain when he gave the Ten Commandments, there were no humans and no animals near that place. If they touched it, God will break out against us. But in the gospel lesson, in this temple, to this temple, the animals are really close. I imagine it was noisy on the way into church. What makes it hard to do when it's noisy? See, in Exodus, God made provision for them to exchange money. If you're traveling from a long way, you don't have to drag an animal with you, but you can exchange money, buy a sacrifice there, exchange money for the temple tax. But where would be a good place for that? It was noisy on Jesus' way into church. Zeal for your house. <laughs> All that noise bothered Jesus because it interfered with giving God glory as he deserves, and with reflecting on why there are even sacrifices, reflecting on what they teach me about God, and even reflecting on how the temple tax gives, takes me into God's giving for me. All that interfered with what God, the glory he deserved, and what he wanted to give people by being there. How did it get that way? It's in me, too. There's a book, it's on my desk in there, that gives a good definition of worship. A good, that's kind of a, a weird word, maybe, worship. 
if you never heard it before, a good definition of worship is what is, what, what is he worth to me? What is he worth to me? And given the location of the animals and all the noise on the way into church and the money being exchanged, that gave a clear answer to that. What was worth more? How did it get that way? It's in me too. It's been said that zeal for the Lord is a reflection or directly proportionate to our devotion to him. Jesus saw that zeal was not for the house of the Lord. That zeal was not where it should have been. It was more about the motions of we got to do to have these sacrifices. It was more about the money. It was just being there. How did it get that way in the church? Well, it's in me too. It's happened to me, maybe it's happened to you that you're maybe here, but your mind is going, racing through a list. Well, what's, what's his worth to me? We're going to say, I believe in the almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, but we kind of sometimes speak through those words. Do I realize who I'm here in the presence of? What's his worth? Athletics. And activities I can be zealous for, but what is his worth to me? Or maybe my even being here, attention. What's his worth to me? The truth is, Jesus could wind up a whip and chase after me and my own heart. There was a lot of noise on the way into church, and it can be noisy even in a quiet church. There's a book called Screw Tape Letters. Maybe you've read it by C.S. Lewis. And it's about trying to get Christians away from the way. And in one, in the neat ways that the demons, at least new to them, can do it. In one of the letters, Screw Tape, who's the demon boss, he writes to his nephew, Wormwood. And he says, there's a way you can get the people away from the way, truth and the life, in the church. And this was his suggestion, provided that meetings and policies and movements matter more to him than prayer and the sacraments, he's ours. And I could show you a pretty cageful down here. Just keep them moving and bothered by other things, looking this way and about each other instead of thinking about this stuff, being here but not really hearing, and he's ours. It gets me to think about what's my number one concern for the church or this church or if you're a visitor, your church. Is it my number one concern that I have a need? That nothing will wash off and I can't buy it out? The question that people are asking they don't know is, where is the lamb? And that Passover lamb taught me that. You know how that would go, the Passover lamb, if you celebrated it? You would bring a puppy. It was a, a one-year-old puppy lamb into your house. Now if you and it'd be there for two weeks. Now if you had kids, what would they likely do with that puppy? They probably would give it a name. But your dad, I'm dad here, at day fourteen, you had to get the knife. I couldn't do it. But you had to do it. So dad grabs the lamb, fighting with a look in its eye that says, what did I do? And then you would cut the throat. 
and with the slit would come screams. Horrible. And blood. And you would watch the look in that lamb's eye as it fought to stay alive as life does. What are you doing to me? And you'd get it. For the first time in your life, you'd get it. Painfully, emotionally painfully, but you'd get it. That the greatest threat to me is not my sickness, it's not sinister people, it's not a struggle immediate to my church or even to me, that the greatest threat to me is a just God whom I have offended by my own fault, by my own grievous fault. And you know what it is. And it's recurrences. What bothers people the most? What they want to get or get rid of? Where's the lamp? I can't buy it out and can't wash it off. I can't forget it. People don't know that they are asking the question that Jesus in the gospel lesson is answering. Let's go to church. This was the first time Jesus went to the Passover in his full-time ministry. What do you think Jesus thought when he saw the lambs? It sounds so awful to sacrifice animals. It just sounds barbaric. But the truth is, if God isn't just, if he doesn't take penalty, he's not caring. And the sacrifices seem harsh, but really it just teaches you that sin is that much more harsh. The sacrifices, the system was not a horrible, bloodthirsty offering. It was a blessing. It was a way back. God must take penalty. Just like we demanded, if someone were to do something horrible to my family, we would demand that justice be served. And God made a way back with that sacrificial system and that blood. You know, the angel of death passed over, but that blood meant that life had been taken. God would accept a substitute. And in John chapter 1, we hear him coming. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Wait a minute. The Lamb of God? God would bring a sacrifice? It was my sins. I should bring the sacrifice. The Lamb of God would bring the sacrifice, and he would exhaust all of his anger against me, against himself. <laughs> Zeal for your house consumes me. We probably don't think about that as to why, what was it for? Zeal for his house consumes me. Well, this was for you too. Just like the desert a couple weeks ago, Jesus stood there in our place and succeeded where we always fail. So his zeal was also for you, for all the times that we don't have zeal for our Lord, not being here, being here, whatever. He was for you. Wherever I fail to be, he was it makes sense for Jesus to say, well, Chris, I'll be as zealous for you as you are for me at times, but that's not what he came to the Jerusalem Passover for. He came to be that Passover shepherd who lived in my place, and then the lamb that gives his life for the sheep, and then later today he will give you, the lamb will give you, the shepherd will give you the lamb of God, his body and blood. Yeah, this Guilt cannot be washed off and it cannot be bought out. That this does something. This does it. This does it. Take and eat. This is for the forgiveness. Can't wash it out. Can't buy it off. This does it. The Lamb of God, take and eat for the forgiveness of sins. Well, I still feel it. Well, look again. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Luther said, it cannot be, sin cannot be on you and Jesus at the same time. That's a remarkable sentiment. And that gives us zeal. Zeal for his house, Lord, help me grow in that. And it gives us strength to struggle against sin and against the struggle. Let's go to church, Jesus said. He interfered with the interference. He wanted to give people something. That whole temple taught that. 
the Jewish Passover taught that God wanted, Jesus wanted to give people the presence of God. In the Old Testament, you couldn't look even in his direction. But the tur- curtain, temple curtain was torn in two. Jesus wants to give the presence of God. He could have, I suppose, fixed this problem and moved me here, not there, and taken this and changed that. But what if I still had my guilt? What if I still had my guilt? Getting rid of that has given us the presence of God, and with that, everything back. That we can even call God our Father, the same word that he uses, that we can eat and drink in his presence, not condemned but comforted. There cannot be any bigger than that. Jesus interfered with what interfered with. There's a book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It follows the adventure of children who discover an enchanted world called Narnia. And it's an allegory that refers to Christ or teaches a little bit about Christ. And Aslan's the center figure in the book, and he's a lion. And one of the more memorable selections is an exchange between the youngest, Lucy, and Mr. Beaver. And Mr. Beaver says to Lucy, well, you know, Aslan, he's a, he's a great lion. And Lucy says, oh, I thought he was a man. I'm a bit nervous to meet a lion. And she asks Mr. Beaver, well, is he safe? And Mr. Beaver answers, who said anything about safe? Of course he's not safe. See Jesus in the temple whip. Of course he's not safe, but he's good. He should chase me with a whip. Amen? But he says, destroy this temple. So be at rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Be at rest, for the Lord has been good to you. Amen. And let's stand to confess that gift of faith and who it is we have been given faith in, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So, Lord, with the psalmist, we lift our eyes up. Help us in our fight against temptation. Help us to live according to directions that you give with life and living. We lift our eyes up to you for help, for forgiveness for our falls and recurring falls. Strengthen us where we are weak. Let no sin rule over us. We lift our eyes up for help in our struggles and adversities. We pray for Gabby Presley, who will be undergoing more tests this week. Raise her hopes by lifting her eyes to you, our help. Give her healing. If not in this life, give her the strength and grace to endure until that day when I make all things new. We lift our eyes up for help, to be content whatever the circumstances, to find content and joy in the work of Christ on our behalf, without which any good would not be any good. We lift our eyes up for help, to be comforted in our discomfort by the truth from your hand we have not condemnation as confessed, but comfort that our sins have been paid for. We lift our eyes up for help, to trust the words in communion given and shed for you, for peace of conscience that comes in those words and help to live better and love one another. And Lord, hear us as we take a moment to bring you our private petitions. And we join to pray that prayer Jesus teaches. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He made his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always
the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the body of the Lord that was given to death for you on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of our sins. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ that was given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and eat the body of your Lord given into death for the forgiveness of all sins. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink the blood of your Savior, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of your sins. The world doesn't know what to do with guilt. It tries to maybe buy it off, forget it, wash it off, but this is it. Where is the Lamb? That's the question, and this is it. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is your forgiveness in your life. Go in peace. You're at peace with God. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior that was given into death for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ that was given into death for you on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. Take and eat the body of your Savior that was shed for you for the forgiveness of every sin. Take and drink the blood of our Lord that was shed for you on the cross of Calvary, all over that cross, for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the true blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. This is the blood of Christ shed in rich measure for you for the forgiveness of your sins. John said, and behold, the Lamb of God, that is the Passover Lamb, the body and blood of the Lord that forgives your sins. You are forgiven, though the devil says otherwise, go in peace. Take and eat. This is the body of the Lord given to death for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink the blood of Christ that was shed for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the true body and true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus that takes away the sin of the world. That includes you. You are forgiven. Go in peace. For our song of thanksgiving, we will join in the verses from 610, Now Thank We All Our God.
Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord. Let the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in this world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Jesus purchased it for you. Live in harmony with one another and serve your great God with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. God gave the law in the first lesson that tabernacle that was mobile pointed to the temple that would be built in Jerusalem and Jesus said that temple points to me as the temple destroy this temple and now do you know what the New Testament letters call the temple of God at the holy place where God dwells do you know what the New Testament letters call the temple of God this phase of it you you first Peter because of that temple who became the Passover lamb that all those Passover lambs pointed to so the angel of death would pass over and you get to live and be in the presence of God. It's kind of a neat full circle today. A special welcome to a couple of brothers, a brother and a sister we have who are visiting us from uh, our sister congregation in Sauk Rapids, Minnesota. And I, it was an interesting thing when I had the call here, I got a call from uh, Mr. Eric over there, because that church had also called me. So I was deliberating the two calls, and he said, I've been to that church. I said, what? 
And today, I get to finally put a, a voice to the face. So we welcome to worship at your home here, whenever you're down here. And also, th that church, I believe you've been calling for a year. Because I think I had the call back in March even. It seems like it's almost a year. So keep that church in your prayers. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of churches uh, that, 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 that don't have shepherds. And still God serves the people, but, but that's something we can pray for them too, that God would give them the shepherd that would be helpful for them and their congregation. So welcome to all of you. Enjoy God's goodness and his grace for you today. Amen. 